In this video, I'm going to talk about how much does it cost to start Amazon FBA in 2024. I'm going to cover these three things. I'm going to start off by talking about the three different ways you can sell on Amazon and the pros and cons for each of them. Then I will share with you how much does it cost to sell via each of those methods. And lastly, I'll give you my personal recommendation on what you should do when you're getting started with Amazon FBA. So first thing first, let's talk about Amazon FBA versus FBM. Now, most people confuse Amazon FBA and FBM with the ways to sell on Amazon. See, Amazon FBA and Amazon FBM are just fulfillment methods by Amazon. So Amazon FBA simply means fulfilled by Amazon, meaning you can send your stock to Amazon. Amazon will hold it within their warehouse. And every time a customer orders it from you, Amazon's going to go ahead and fulfill that order, meaning they will ship the product to your customer. Whereas FBM means fulfilled by merchant. So you are selling on Amazon. But whenever you get an order, you're the one who's keeping that stock in your warehouse, in your home, in your office. And every time you get an order, you're going to ship it out to your customer. So that's FBA and FBM. These are fulfillment methods. Now, I'm going to talk about the three different ways you can sell on Amazon. All right. Now, these are the methods you can sell on Amazon with. The first one is arbitrage Amazon. Arbitrage Amazon simply means when you go to a local shop, like a local sorry, retailer or a supermarket, you go to the clearance section and you find products that are 50 or 60% discounted. You open your Amazon app, scan it, or you can literally go on your Amazon app and at the top you will see a little scan button. Scan that product and you'll be able to see that exact same product come up on Amazon. If it's selling for more, then you can go ahead and buy as many units as you can from there and you can send it off to Amazon if you're doing Amazon FBA. And then every time you get an order, Amazon will ship prep um, pick pack and ship that product to your customer now what is the kind of benefit or i'll first talk about the uh, benefits and then the negatives the benefit is that you can start with really less money like you don't need to have thousands you can if you have less than 500 pounds you can go ahead and start arbitrage because you can just go and buy 10 units for 50 pounds from your local retailer and then you can get started but the cons of this is you're limited to the number of units you can buy because you might know that some suppliers or some retailers, sorry, will have a limit on how many units you can buy for that product. So you can't really scale it. And the barrier to entry is also low. So there are going to be other people buying that same product as well. And they might jump on that listing with you. So that's that. One more pro, a positive thing about arbitrage is that you're already selling on listings which are already selling well. So you don't need to go ahead and pay money in ads, create your own listing. You just look at an existing listing, take that listing, add it to your inventory, and you can start selling on that. Second way of selling on Amazon is wholesale Amazon. Now, this is what I have been doing for the last two years, or this is what SourceU talks about or is about wholesale Amazon. Wholesale Amazon is basically when you look when you buy branded products from either the brand directly or a authorized wholesaler in bulk and you resell that product on Amazon. For example, if you go ahead and buy this North Face hat from North Face themselves, then you can buy this product from them in bulk and then resell it on Amazon as long as there are other people selling this exact same product on Amazon. So that is wholesale Amazon basically. What's the positive of it? You can buy as many units as you want from a wholesaler or the brand themselves if they let you sell on Amazon. You can also, uh, don't you don't have to spend money in ads because again, you're buying products and selling products which are already selling on Amazon it means you're reselling it on a listing that's already good. The drawbacks of wholesale, yes, there could be competition because other people will buy it as well. And so you might have sort of competition. But if you're smart and you know the tactics on how to deal with competition, then that's not going to be a major disadvantage for you as well. So it's all about how you can negotiate with your suppliers to get the cheapest possible price for that product as well. That's wholesale Amazon. Next is Amazon private label or private label. Private label is basically when you get a unbranded product from China you put your logo on that product and then you re list that product on Amazon. You create a brand new listing for it. You take pictures of that product. Uh, then you do keyword research and then you do Amazon PPC, which is basically Amazon's advertising platform where you pay money in ads. So your listing for your product comes on the first page. Now, private label, the advantage is that you can make a lot of profit because with a lot of investment comes bigger profits as well. And you don't have any competition on your listing because you own the brand. So no one can sell on your listing. Uh, and if they do, you can 
uh, tell Amazon to kick them out. Now, the drawback of this is that it is slightly expensive to do private label because you have to manufacture your own product. You have to do keyword research. You have to do PPC. And everything will cost you money. Another drawback of uh, private label is also that when you do launch your brand, if it doesn't go successful, then you basically lost your money. Okay, next is how much do each of these methods cost if you want to start them in 2024? I'll break down each one. So first one, let's start with how much does Amazon Arbitrage cost? So there are a few costs associated. Associated. Now I've listed down all the costs and I'll tell you which one applies to Amazon Arbitrage. So seller account, yes, if you're in the UK, you have to pay £25 excluding VAT, so £30 a month including VAT. Software like Socio, if you're going to use Socio, Socio also has a starter plan now, which is just for $24.99 and you can use the discount code below to also get a further 40% off. Then you have to you have cost for prepping the products, which also applies to arbitrage. UPC codes does not apply to arbitrage because this is more for private label. For stock, yes, you need to buy stock. So when you go to a retailer, that applies to you. Ads, no, it does not apply to you because you don't need to run ads when doing arbitrage. FBA fees, the main one for FBA fees is... Uh, the main FBA fees, which is the cost that Amazon charges you to do the pick, pack and ship. Referral fees is basically a sort of percentage Amazon is going to take from your profit because you're selling on their platform. Because there's already, there's basically over 200 million prime sellers or buyers, sorry, who come on the platform. So they're basically giving you free customers. Hence, they charge you referral fees. And then storage fees is basically... Whenever you send your stock to Amazon, they're going to they're gonna put that stock in their warehouses and so they will charge you storage fees. There are short-term storage fees and long-term. If you sell your stock in like less than a month, then you won't be charged storage fees every single month. You'll be just charged once. Then product images and trademark, you won't be this won't be applied to arbitrage because you don't need to take product images or you don't need to take any trademark. Now, how hard is arbitrage? I think it's pretty simple. You can go find so many videos on you on YouTube which will teach you how to do this. There is no secret to arbitrage. So, in terms of how hard is it, I feel like anyone can do it. Profit potential, I would say this is lower for most people. But if you start taking arbitrage seriously and you actually want to scale it, then you have to hire VAs and Tell, teach them how to look for these type of deals and then you to keep buying these deals. So I wouldn't say if you want to scale or make more profit, I wouldn't say choose arbitrage. I would say choose something like either wholesale or private label. Again, for scalability, it's lower. But if you want to scale it big, then you have to have a bigger team. You have to kind of have, keep looking for these deals. And it's not really a sustainable way to scale a business. Next one is how much does Amazon wholesale cost? Again, for cost, there is seller account cost, there is software cost. Uh, for, for, even for arbitrage, you can use Socio because the products you're going to find on the product database, you can go ahead and look for a retail supplier for that as well. The prep cost, again, is needed. UPC codes, nope. For wholesale, you don't need that. Yes, you need stock cost. Ads, no, you don't need to spend money in ads. Yes, there is FBA fees. Yes, yes, there's referral fees. And yes, there is storage fees. But there is no cost for product images or trademark. How hard is it? I feel like there are videos on my personal YouTube channel as well where I show you kind of the whole process. But with wholesale, there is a lot more to it than just arbitrage. In wholesale, you're actually building a Amazon business. So it's not something you can just go to a retailer and buy a few units of that. You're actually going to have to uh, build relationship with your suppliers, know how to talk with the suppliers, know how to negotiate with the suppliers and all sort of things. So I would say it's medium. Profit potential as much as you want obviously the more you spend the more you can make but with this your it is easier to scale because once you have found a product and it's selling well as long as there's no competition jumping on that listing with you and taking tanking the price down you can continue selling that product so that's the scalability wise and then there is private label how much does amazon private label cost so the cost is going to be your seller account your software now for 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 this you can use uh, socio the product database but you can use something like other platforms that are out there which are mainly used for private label prep cost yep you need prep cost for this prep cost you can ideally tell your supplier in like china to do the prep for you and then they will ship it off directly to amazon for you so you don't need to get that product into your office you can do that with wholesale as well but ideally i always say for wholesale bring it into your office uh, as it's not going to cost you a lot of money for shipping and some suppliers in wholesale uh, don't directly send that product off to Amazon. 
Then UPC barcodes, yes, you need UPC barcodes because your product is unbranded. So you need to have a barcode so you can list it on Amazon. Stock, yes, ads, yes, you need to spend money in ads so you can bring that product up on the first page. FBA fees, again, these are the main fees that you are still going to be applied. Yes, you need money for product images and trademark. How hard is it? I feel like it's a lot more harder because I've personally done private label and there is a lot more that goes in private label than wholesale or arbitrage. Profit potential are high, as I mentioned. Because you're building your own brand, investing a lot of money, there is high potential uh, for profit. Scalability-wise, it's also scalable because when you're alone in the listing, you know you can predictably invest more money into the stock if that listing is getting more and more traction and you'll be able to scale plus you can add more SKUs or as in more products to your brand and that will help you scale as well so, so to summarize this arbitrage you would start if you have 100 to 500 pound wholesale you would start if you have a thousand to five thousand pounds and private label you would start if you have five thousand to ten thousand pounds these are the amount of this is the amount of money ideally you would want to have if you want to start any of these so this should cover the inventory cost, all the costs that I just spoke about. Uh, but the one thing I would say, and my personal recommendation, if you're just getting started with Amazon, here's what I would say. Start with either arbitrage or wholesale, just because it has low investment and you will learn the basics. You will know how to send a product to Amazon. You will know how Amazon works. And going directly to private label, meaning you have to learn all this, plus what's in here which makes it a lot more difficult and i know so many people who start private label and they fail and then they think amazon doesn't work well that's because you started the hardest you went to the hardest level first instead of going from level one to level two level three so ideally go start at level one or level two and then go to level three because again there is a lot more to learn and the thing with level three is that imagine spending five thousand or ten thousand pounds on a product and then that product fails you just lost yourself five to ten thousand pounds. Whereas when you do wholesale, you will start getting understanding of how these products work, what type of products sell, all those little things that you wouldn't be able to know if you hadn't started arbitrage or wholesale. So again, my personal recommendation is start arbitrage and then see how that goes. Then you can start something like wholesale and then you can move to private label. So these are this is basically how much it costs to start Amazon FBA in 2024. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and comment down below what other videos you would like me to make. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh, go check out this video actually.